Hey, this is Jeremy Gilbert, and I'm going to show you today a little bit about how I've been able to recreate the Boards of Canvas sound uh, using completely uh, software-based tools. If you do any research on Boards of Canada, um, their music has this amazing warmth that uh, that really uh, makes you feel like you're listening to something very different from the very simple synthesizer sounds that they're actually playing. And uh, I'll, and if you do a lot of research on this, uh, on, on how they get that effect, you realize it's because they're using a ton of magnetic tape. They're doing pretty much everything themselves, re-recording uh, over and over in the studio to get that particular sound. Um, I love that sound, and I've been playing around with the last couple of weeks, and I want to show you how I've been able to get some of that using some of the tools uh, from UHG uh, that are really fantastic. So let's, let's listen to uh, Turquoise, Turquoise Hexagon Sun as an example. It's a nice, mellow, chimey sound. Um, so how do we get that? Um, well, what I've done is uh, I'm going to switch over to Diva, which is... Uh, my favorite synthesizer, uh, and um, I actually have a patch here, and I, that I, I may do a tutorial on later, uh, which is basically a um, a modification from Stephen Way, who's this uh, he he does a lot of these really amazing presets that um, that are inspired by sounds like Boards of Canada, um, and then this particular patch, I'll play it for you. It's really just a sine wave. Um, I've turned off all the echo and everything in, uh, in in Diva. So this is pretty much exactly what is coming out of a pre-basic synthesizer, uh, like the kinds that um, Boards of Canada used. Um, so how do we get that really nice warmth? Um, you can even hear as I play these notes, by the way, that it's a very bright signal, uh, which is another thing that you don't hear in the Boards of Canada Master. Let's play that again. Yeah, they, they, they got, those guys really nailed a very mellow sound. So, um, okay, let's uh, let's give this a shot. So, I'm gonna pull open uh, Satin, and um, the way it works is uh, basically it's just taking things, pretending that it's putting it on a tape, and then reading it back off the tape in real time. Um, and playing it, and these these big VU meters here, the ones that have the thing, are basically the input signal, and then this uh, is what's coming out. Now, in a very flat kind of default studio setup, you're not hearing too much, um, essentially because uh, it's simulating a very good tape. So we're going to start kind of working backwards the kind of crummier tapes that I'm sure and, and, and a gear that uh, that I'm sure the boards of Canada were using. I'll set the mode to vintage, add a soft clip in case I drive the system too hard. And um, now you'll notice the first thing I can do here is drive up the input. And what that's doing is it saturating the tape? It's it's literally driving the tape hard against its response capabilities, and that has a nice effect of mellowing the sound, making it a lot more listenable and a lot more analog and a lot more just interesting and pleasant and something that you you know you'd want to use in a song. We can do more than that. Um, and um, let's actually use their tool to add the delay effect that the Boards of Canada use. Let's play, let's play that again so you can hear it. So to get that delay effect, um, a couple of things are, all, all that essentially hap is happening in Satin is it's going to put the stuff out on the tape and then it's going to pretend that there are two pickups spaced a little bit away from the magnetic tape as it travels by and that's going to add the delay effect. And the way that um, I typically configure this is I say, all right, well, I want to have one of my delays being on the on the left ear, the other delay being on the right. Um, I'll give each a little bit of a level here. 
And then um, tempo sync is pretty important. It basically pretends like you were using, uh, it ignores the fact that, that normally the spacing of the heads would be highly governed by the speed of the tape. And it just says, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna use the delays that based on, on the tempo of your song, which I think is a lot easier to control. Um, so I would definitely put that on when you're starting to play with the satin. Um, and so I'm going to set these both out a little bit, a, t a head distance of about two for the different sides. You can see I've got that nice mellow echo. Add a little bit more. Let's hear the original. Yeah, that's nice. And I, I can add a little bit of feedback if I want. Yeah, and now I got a little bit a lot closer to the Boards of Canada sound. One other thing that we can do here is we can simulate some of the really crummier aspects of the tape. We're still using a pretty good, in so in the simulation, we're still using a pretty good uh, tape uh, here in the, um, in the simulator. But what I can do is I can start to you know, add some of the crap that uh, that I'm sure exists in the old machines that they use. In fact, in one case, they even described it as a secret weapon. So I can lower the headroom. I'm just going to add more of that saturation effect. And then I can add a lot of wow and flutter, which is basically, um, a, you know, a mangled cast band or something that... Add some more crosstalk. And that's how you get that Boards of Canada sound. It's essentially just simulating really crummy tapes. One other thing you can do is add a little bit of wobble into the delay effect itself, which adds a lot of interest. So if I turn this mod amount up a little bit and a little bit of the rate, you get that nice kind of echoey chime because the, the tapes are actually, the heads are almost pretending like they're moving across the tape a little bit. A little bit more on the right channel. And you're hearing those two, those two chimes kicking in. That's basically because of, um, of the, the mix between uh, the end and the delay. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. All right, let's compare. Never mind. And there you go. That's how you get the Boards of Canada effect um, using software uh, uh, and using some of the great tools from uh, UHE, uh, which uh, uh, they put a lot of care and attention in these things, and it really shows in this tool.